Well, hello everybody, it's Sean Petit, one of Donna Downey's curators, and we're talking texture today, all the grunge and texture I could possibly get on this 8x10 MDF board. I'm going to be working on two of those today. But right now I'm just going to put down some papers for the background, and part of the reason that I do this is texture, and part of it is the unexpected magic that happens when some of those papers show through. Um, you, as your underlayer, it just is magic, magic, magic. And so I've just put everything down with golden um, matte medium. And now I have some latch hook rug material that I've used as stencils and other projects, so it's got a little bit of paint on it. And I put all of those down with golden heavy gel so that it would hold it in place. And now I'm putting down some golden glass bead gel. This stuff is like diamonds. Just, it dries clear, it can be used for so many applications, and um, it's just, it adds this really great unexpected um, texture. And so now I'm going to be covering the rest of my piece with um, golden modeling paste. And I'm mixing that in alongside the glass bead um, gel, and I'm trying to create this illusion that those that that um, latch hook rug material is coming out of that modeling paste. So I'm drying just a section here so that the modeling paste is a little bit stiffer and that way when I stamp my word in um, it stays instead of kind of moves around when it's a little bit wet still so make sure to dry your area and that way it'll hold the impression of that stamp. So I'm going to do this again with the same exact process, same exact materials, except this time I've added just a few more things to help with some texture. So I'm using some drywall tape and some shelf liner and that kind of thing to just impress into that modeling paste again to give it some more texture. And again, I've dried and stamped my letters in there. Now I'm using Donna Downey's stencil. I believe it's, it'll be listed in the supplies. And um, I've let everything dry and, now, I, and I've put, now I'm putting the modeling paste on top of the already dry modeling paste. So we're just doubling up on all of that lovely texture. And that is my um, wildflower stencil that I just used there. Now I've grabbed my gesso. Now that both pieces are completely dry, and I'm going to go over the gesso, uh, over the piece with gesso, F again fully trying to incorporate those those latch hook rug pieces into the piece so that it looks somewhat seamless. And I'm trying not to cover up all of the edges, all of the pieces, because I still want some of that paper to show through that that unexpected magic that I talked about. I'm working now to really try to make that happen. And I cover it with gesso so that the surface is the same. Um, sometimes modeling paste can dry a little bit slick, and I want the surface to be ready to accept um, the paint and the glaze that we're going to put on top. So gesso gives it a little bit of a ground um, so that everything works really well and plays well together and pencil marks and all those kinds of things work really well on top of the gesso. So now I'm using um, Golden's Fluid Acrylic in teal and Golden Glazing Medium, and I'm just doing a glaze over the top to catch all of that yummy goodness that is happening. And I'm going to do the same process on both pieces. And just really kind of scrubbing it in there to get in all those nooks and crannies to catch um, and just really accentuate all of that modeling paste and bead gel and all of the goodness that we have created. Now I'm going to use some um, 
high flow acrylic in sepia and glazing medium and I just love this color and it just is, gives it this vintage feel. And I'm scrubbing it off pretty well because I want there'll be a, another layer but I want my teal to show through as well. So I've done that to both pieces and just going back and touching things up a little bit, putting on a second layer and darkening the edges like I like. And now I'm going to seal all of this with some matte medium to give it really good coverage again and to give it a ground to accept the um, pan pastels that we're going to be using. Um, this gives it just a bit of grit so that um, what we do from here forward is going to stay. And with the pan pastels I'm using a uh, um, it's one of the brushes that comes in a kit with the pan pastels, but it looks like a makeup brush and you could use that. But I'm using plums and quinacridone magenta and a dark plum um, just here and there and around the stenciled areas to really further accentuate it. Now I'm using just a tiny bit of gesso on my palette knife and my palette knife is really flat against my surface to just skim across the um, areas that are raised. Um, white kind of brings things forward and brings the eye around the piece and highlights certain areas and so I usually will always do some type of highlighting with white. Now I've got some fluid um, uh, acrylic in carbon black and I'm going back through those words and just um, laying it down uh, in the recessed area so that, that the words show up and I'm also going alongside the stenciled areas the raised areas and um, further accentuating that um, stencil So this was a quick video today talking about texture and all of the different layers and lovely things that we can do with our textured um, gels and mediums. All the supplies will be listed on Donna Downey's blog and um, if you have any questions you can leave them below. If you like today give me a, a like and subscribe to my channel and I will be back next week for my last curator post for the month of July. I hope you have a wonderful day.